Well, uh, yeah, we're back. Uh, Virgil, I mean, I mean, he's been back for a while. He was on the most recent episode, but you know, we're just touching base with you now uh, as you, re- you return from your sojourn in uh, in Berlin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it went well though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I, I, well, you you I, fi- I think so. Yeah. You filed a report from Berlin. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was weird. Uh, okay. So. Okay. She, okay. Well. I'm, should we play? Should we just uh, play, play yeah? But yeah, I'm sure. Uh, uh, should give it a proper intro there. I'm sure yeah. you you know you've been you've been seeing the news about what's going on in Europe right now, and uh, you know I, I figured I'm there. I, I should file a first person report. There's a lot of stuff going on in Europe right now. Yeah, it's a lot of European stuff. Uh, you know, and hopefully this will make things clearer to our listeners. Okay, all right. Let's. Uh, this, <laughs> is, this is Virgil Texas reporting from uh, Berlin, Dateline, Berlin. This is Berlin, where the German chapter of the anti-climate change protest group Extinction Rebellion continues to paralyze the nation's capital for the sixth straight day. Shops are closed, schools are out, all transportation is shut down, leaving this city of three and a half million at a total standstill. The crisis began on Monday when 12 Extinction Rebellion activists staged a daring bit of street theater in Kreuzberg an interpretive dance performance of Bertolt Brecht's Life of Galileo, translated into the screams of dying animals. The spectacle was soon joined by over 25,000 red-eyed pub goers who had just spent the past 72 hours disassociating in the cold concrete warrens of Berghain and Trezor. Re-emerging in the harsh light of day, they found not the sensible liberal democratic society they were familiar with, but streets populated by shirtless dissidents making discordant animal yells. Unstuck from reality, the clubbers accepted this new credo and added their voices to the cacophony. This burgeoning mob caught the attention of workers at Der Funky Beats factory in the Mitte district, where 200,000 rank-and-file DJs answered the call for a general strike, <laughs> shutting down all production and provoking catastrophic beat shortages throughout the Eurozone. Desperate clubs in Milan, Amsterdam, and Lisbon have turned to counterfeit beats reportedly of Ukrainian origin. <laughs> EU health officials warn that many of these ersatz beats have been cut with dangerously bad vibes, and thousands of club goers have been hospitalized with conditions ranging from rhythm loss to flashbacks to ego death. The beat shortage has wrecked havoc on the city's business perverts, all 600,000 of whom spontaneously walked off the job on day three of the crisis, without ketamine and their funky beats to mediate their subjectivity with the hollow conformity of late capitalist society, these relatively high-income workers have come down with a terminal case of ennui, leaving Berlin's once roaring paperwork factories along the Spree eerily silent. On day four, the unthinkable became reality, when the business perverts defaulted on their scheduled payments to Berlin's 1.1 million piss pigs. <laughs> the furloughing of these degenerate piss-crazy subs has sent shockwaves throughout the regional economy, and as more dominoes fall, EU finance ministers are shouting the alarm of a total Eurozone meltdown. On Friday, Chancellor Angela Merkel cut short her visit to Japan, where she was negotiating a 95 billion euro arms for hentai trade deal (laughs) to address the domestic crisis, first flying to Krakow, then crossing the Polish-German border via motorcar in the opposite direction of millions of sausage-eared refugees, Merkel finally made it to Berlin late Saturday evening. There, she offered an olive branch to the 12 protesters, an invitation to join her cabinet and help write the nation's climate policy. Extinction Rebellion quickly released a terse response on their official Zanga. No thanks, we don't do politics. The word do in asterisks there. And so the protest grinds on, as does what appears to be the total collapse of German society on every level. Germany's neighbors are scrambling to limit their exposure to the contagion. In next-door France, President Macron has guaranteed payments to the nation's 60 million mistresses and gigolos in the event of an economic collapse. (laughs) Conversely, the Italian government has chosen to meet Extinction Rebellion with brute force, deploying tactical units of street harassers and Tier 1 catcallers to every major city, (laughs) vowing to terminate any climate protest with extreme prejudice against women and minorities. 
In the Eurozone's periphery, representatives from Greece, Ireland, and Portugal have scheduled a meeting to discuss a possible bailout package for Berlin. Boris jo- Hang on. Wait. Is... Is that... Yes, I'm getting word that the leader of Extinction Rebellion Deutschland, Hermann Geck, is about to speak to the nation. Let's patch that in.